Hello, this is Matthew Miller from the Nokia Expert site. Um, I was given some information a couple weeks ago about a May 4th release date and a bunch of documents for the Nokia E71X. Been pretty excited about this device because we're finally going to get uh, a um, good E series device uh, in the US. Uh, previously, we had the E61, where was it, the E61? Yeah, it was E61, not the I. Not the I. Uh, came to AT&T. They did a few things to it, uh, like took away the Wi-Fi and made some other adjustments. So I was pretty excited to see the AT&T version, and I'm one store out of six that I called and went and picked one up. So I'm going to offer this uh, first look, and I have a pretty extensive post I'm putting together uh, that this video will be part of. I recommend you check it out because it has a full list of just about everything you need to know with the E71X compared to the E71. Now on the left here, this one, is the unlocked E71 and on the right is the black AT&T E71X. As you can see the form factor is the same. Uh, the color is black, uh, it is steel, not plastic on the back like some people thought it was. Camera is 3.2 megapixel, however as you will see in my uh, review and the still photos, um, no pink tint. They fixed the camera software, so that's that's good. Uh, the camera is actually usable now. Uh, maybe not so for video, but uh, it is for for still pictures. As you can see, all the thing things are on the sides. The infrared port, the um, micro SD USB plug still uses Nokia charging port, and I haven't tested to see if the micro USB charges. I'll test that too and put that in my review. Still have the volume up and down the center key and a two and a half millimeter jack, not a three and a half millimeter. So form factor is very much the same. One slight difference, and you won't be able to see it. You really have to get your hands on it. Is uh, the E71 unlocked as kind of slick keys, whereas the E71X they're a little rougher. So your finger actually does not slide as much across them. It gives a little bit of a grip to it, um, which is kind of nice to have. So that's kind of the hardware, pretty much the same, 1500 milliampere battery. Everything else is, is pretty much the same on, this, on the hardware part. Now let's uh, get a little closer here and I'll go ahead and turn off the light, get into some of the software. So this is kind of the, uh, the default home screen there. Uh, this is just the one that came with it, the black, I believe it's called. Um, however, unlike the E71, you can't do much with this. Um, let's see, what is that called? It's called the... Um, just a second, let me just... Uh, find yeah, so the big thing was, uh, is, is the mode where you can customize the home screen apps. On this one, you cannot customize the home screen apps. So what you see is pretty much what you get. You can customize uh, the bottom two uh, soft keys and those um, the row of icons up top, you can customize what applications those are, but all this data in the middle you can't really customize. You can, however, um, just like the E71, um, set up some of the notifications. Okay, I believe there's four notifications, missed calls, voicemail, that kind of thing. So that's, that is a good feature to have. Another uh, thing is you cannot customize the one touch keys, which is the hardware buttons down here. Those are not customizable, unfortunately. Now, if we go in here, you'll see that there's, I've actually moved a couple things. There is, if we go down to here to AT&T Music, AT Music, I did move in Media Mall and Cellular Video. Those are the only two AT&T services that you're actually able to move to different folders. Traditionally, on my S60 devices, I set up a junk or a stuff folder where I put all my extras that I either access once as a setup or I never access again. On here, with all this AT&T stuff, you cannot... Uh, move them to different folders. Most of them, as you can see in these options, you can move. What that means is you can move it around within this folder, such as this is the home, so you can move it around within here. You can't move it to another folder. So I will have an extensive list of everything that's loaded on here for AT&T, but let's just jump into uh, the games and apps. So as you can see here, there's several hyperlinks throughout the uh, E71X, such as shop game, shop apps on this screen, these are just hyperlinks in the browser, nothing else. And uh, there's, I think, five or six of those throughout this device. Also, all of these games are actually games you have to purchase. These are just demos. Unfortunately, as you can see here, you can't even move these. Um, 
or see as you can see I highlight that you can't move them you can't move them around on the screen and you cannot delete them when you go to the application manager to try to delete them it says you're unable to install these okay so that's kind of a pain in the butt because I really don't need all of these demo games if I wanted a game I would look for it one thing that you may notice that's missing is the download there is absolutely no download on here so I'm very curious to see if this is going to get OV Store support um, I know downloads not the best, but it at least gives me uh, access to some applications. In tools here, pretty standard uh, E71 tools as you can see, and then uh, settings is another one that's similar to tools. Those are all pretty much the same, except for what I mentioned about the home screen settings. Those are not uh, customizable. Now in AT&T Music, I had expected to see the Nokia podcasting application. However, this application is missing from the E71X. I'm going to download it and see if I can install it, uh, which I hopefully I can. Um, let's see, there's music apps and shop music, both are hyperlinks. XM Radio is a paid for service, Music ID Shazam, which is also a paid for service. And Media, Media Mall is a shopping place, Cellular Video is another paid service. There's several paid services. I completely understand that. It's AT&T's, but please let me put them into one folder away from it if I don't want to be bothered with it. Let's see, going into apps again, if we go down to the bottom, I did put down, load some applications. I loaded a screenshot, I loaded Google Maps, and the Nokia email client. Okay, now, I'll go back into that in a bit, the Nokia email client. Um, with Google Maps and also with AT&T GPS, which is the Telenav client, right there, AT&T Nav, uh, I was able to get a GPS fix within about two seconds. It was extremely quick with both AT&T Nav and Google Maps. Um, I haven't tried any other GPS clients but those two worked wonderfully and extremely fast um, within my car. It wasn't even direct access to a window so that was pretty cool. Okay I just wanted to test something because I, I could have sworn this is what happened last time. So as you can see I have the Nokia email and the email setup. Now when you click on that it does nothing because what this setup does is it actually when you do the setup it just throws your uh, your client right into the messaging folder, so it goes back to the default lane client. So not very good there. Uh, one thing, when you set up email, you're only given two choices. Rather interesting, Mail for Exchange. However, when you click that, it actually downloads Mail for Exchange. It's not on the device, so it's not part of that incredible Nokia messaging uh, suite that we see on the E75 device. And then there's also this uh, Express Mail. I really don't understand what it is. It's a you click on it, uh, it says it's already installed because I've done that, but it's from 7, um, it's a downloadable client, looks very similar to the uh, just the standard Nokia uh, messaging email client, so I don't really understand that. Uh, Mail for Exchange of course works fine. Uh, instant messaging, this is actually, be careful here, this is actually the Oz clients, so uh, AOL, um, Windows Live, and Yahoo. However, it uses your text messaging for instant messaging, not the data. So I only have 200 messages. I will not be using this and be careful with that. It, it is a pretty good client, um, especially if you're somebody like uh, my daughters that don't have data. They could use uh, this Oz client to use their text messages, unlimited text messaging, to uh, chat with people, which is pretty cool. So that's kind of a walk around. Um, I will have a full list of some of these limitations. Let me just turn my light on so I can read some of my notes. Uh, big things were no Nokia podcasting, no Nokia maps, uh, Nokia email does not seem to be working. A huge one for me actually is on the home screen on the E71. As I type somebody's name, it does the contact search smart dial. This does not support that. It's no setting for it, uh, nowhere in there, which is uh, something that I really use a lot on the E71. So that's, that's very disappointing. It does have Quick Office 4.1, uh, not the 2007 Office support, but everything else, and a few of the other applications that you come to expect. The camera, I said, uh, works pretty good. So that's about it for now. Um, I'll take a further look at the uh, Telenav later and show that because that does actually work pretty well. But uh, there's just uh, a lot of stuff on here that. Um, you know, my price, uh, the new new price would be 190 or 99, which is 149 with a $50 rebate. For me, as an existing customer who upgraded last uh, about eight months ago, 
I could uh, probably get down $50 more or so, but my price was uh, $300. With tax, it was $330. Um, and a SIM unlocked E71 that has uh, some more functionality is actually about the, about that same price. So and my advice would be actually to uh, go for the unlocked version and not the AT&T version, um, just to get a few of those other functions. All right, so that's a first look at the Nokia E71X. Thanks for watching.